So welcome to our community call that's sort of a potluck of topics. Uh, we were going to call it a grab bag, and that sounded too informal. So <laughs> we're going with a, a world cafe of conversations. Um, there are many topics that folks have raised over the past year, year and a half, that we keep in a spreadsheet of things that people want to talk about that we're not sure the best way to talk about them. And every once in a while, I, I think, boy, maybe we can just try to get into several of them at once. And sometimes there are some that connect in some small way. Um, I'm not sure that these topics necessarily connect, the ones that we've kind of listed in advance. Um, and they may not be the ones for today. There may be other topics that are that are more pressing or that are really on the top of your heart or your mind or uh, your to-do list for today. And so we're open to that. Um, this is a generative community space. Um, but the idea is uh, like an in-person world cafe kind of facilitated experience, uh, we'll have tables for discussion, except there'll be breakout rooms. And we'll spend a little time hopping from topic to topic. If one conversation is pretty hot and a lot of people are interested in it, we might keep that breakout room open and have uh, other breakout rooms change. And if different folks want to move in on the same topic and, and discuss it, uh, they're welcome to do so. So we'll kind of do uh, whatever meets the needs of the group who's here. Um, but to start, especially for folks who haven't been here, it's good to do a little bit of centering and a little bit of introduction so we know who all is in the room here. Um, and then I also have a poll uh, that I'll put in front of us to kind of get your input on which of these topics actually is interesting to you for today. So if there are some that no one really <laughs> is concerned about, <laughs> we won't even bother creating a breakout room for it. Um, so to start, let's do a little bit of centering, uh, make sure that you're comfortable as I was saying before, and I'll lead you in just a short uh, breathing exercise just for a minute here. If you want to close your eyes or turn off your camera, you're welcome to. Uh, just to move from a place that's a little more grounded. So as you uh, find yourself in a place of comfort, uh, find a little dignity in your posture, arrange yourself so that you're uh, finding it easy to breathe. Um, and let's maybe do a little bit of a scan as we as we pay attention to our breath. With that pattern that's already there of our breathing, finding ourselves aware of our body, our thoughts. <laughs> the time of day, the temperature, where we are, how we're feeling, any spots in our body that are uncomfortable or that are comfortable. Maybe you've done a, a head to toe scan or a, a finger to fingertip scan, but inviting you to really sense your weight and the earth supporting you, gravity supporting you, holding you together, your relationship with your surroundings with all that's alive around you. And from there, what, what do you want? Where, where are you headed? What, what, uh, what do you need? What do you, what are you moving toward? So a couple more deep breaths there. to stay with that place and then returning back to the group and to this conversation with each other, coming from the fullness of 
all that we're holding in the middle of our busy days. What do we want to talk about together? What could happen? <laughs> There's so much potential in this group. That's what I love about this group. Um, let's do a little bit of introduction, just something uh, kind of short and sweet so that we have time to, to move into conversation. If you could share your name, uh, the name of your center, where you're located. I like to include a, a, a mention or an honoring of the indigenous peoples that are from that place. Um, and then maybe just a word about, you know, what came up for you in that session or, or, or where, what you're holding, how you're feeling, just a word, um, something that can help us get into the room together. And I can start, I can model. My name is Ben. I work for the RCC, program director. I'm based in Grand Rapids, Michigan, Anishinaabe land here, the Potawatomi, the Ottawa, the Ojibwe peoples. Um, I'm feeling curious, that's my word. And maybe we can pass it to someone else in the room. So I might pass it over to Jean Sullivan. Hello, I'm Jean Sullivan. I work at Prairie Woods, which is in Iowa. And um, we are just starting to connect again with the Meskwaki tribe. Um, there have been a number of tribes that have um, lived in Iowa and in the area where we are. <clears throat> um, and I would say it's nice and warm today. So that's what I'm feeling. Yeah, do we want to try passing it? I'll, I'll let you pass, Jean. Sure, I will pass that over to Leslie. <laughs> okay, I think that's cheating. I am Leslie. I'm also at Prairie Woods in Hiawatha, Iowa. Um, our feet are planted on land traveled by the Meskwaki Nation, Iowa, and others. Um, and Today, I just have come in from hosting a labyrinth walk. I'm feeling warm and inspired. And I will pass it to, um, is it Eve? Hello, thank you, Leslie. Uh, my name is Eve and I am from Elohi Center in Sauti Nakuchi, Georgia, which are the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. And we come, this the indigenous um, history here, Sauti Nakuchi, Elohi, Cherokee is uh, Cherokee and Muscogee are the people that um, have been here before, stewards before us here. And uh, we picked the name Elohi because it means earth, literally earth translated in Cherokee but also because we liked it for the similar um, words in other languages. So Elohim in Hebrew means God and Aloha in Hawaiian means love and welcome. So we kind of feel like it's a melding of those different things. But so um, I'm one of the founders here at Elohim and my feeling for today is hopeful for community support. And I pick Ben. Thanks, Eve. Uh, my name is Ken. I work for the Children's Defense Fund at the Alex Haley Farm in, in Clinton, Tennessee, just north of Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, and we are on uh, the lands of, of the Cherokee. And my word for the day is, is the room where I'm sitting. I'm gonna pass it along to Deborah. Hi, I'm Deborah. Uh, I work at Gilchrist Retreat Center in Three Rivers, Michigan uh, on Potawatomi land. Um, I, uh, my coworkers and I were just at a session with 
um, some Cistercian monks and nuns. And so that was an interesting um, uh, interesting session. Good to hear from them. I'll pass it to Stacy. Um, hi, I'm Stacy Kalis from uh, Franciscan Spirituality Center in uh, La Crosse, Wisconsin, and we are primarily Ho Chunk Nation. Um, and um, yeah, it's it's beautiful. I kind of want to be outside too, so I'm just feeling really hopeful about this meeting, but also kind of torn, like I want to go home. But <laughs> and I will um, pass to Tony. Hi, everybody. I am Tony, and I am located in Delaware, and I represent a couple different things, organizations, the Episcopal Church, Camp Arrowhead, and also Memorial House. Um, I am feeling very peaceful and excited to be here. I will pass it over to, let's see, Leslie. Um, I have already had the chance to um, introduce myself. So how about if I pass it to hey. Kathy? Yeah. Hello. I'm Kathy Kemmler from the Creighton University Retreat Center. We are located in Griswold, Iowa. I believe we are on the land of Wakanda, but I am not 100% sure. We have the name of Wakanda here at the retreat center, but I don't know the history of how that got here. So I have some work to do. I just came from a, a session on cultivating joy. Uh, so I come with a, in a state of joy. And, and I'm feeling anticipatory. I'm, I'm excited to uh, talk about a certain topic. So I think I will pass it to Katie. Hello, I'm Katie Heishman, um, and I am at the Richmond Hill, which is an urban retreat center in Richmond, Virginia. And we are on the land of the Powhatan and Chickahominy. And my word is, well, words, hopeful yet skeptical that my baby will nap during this meeting. So <laughs> I might have to depart. We'll see. <laughs> and I will pass to Paul. Hi there, I'm Paul Mock. I'm uh, the director at Lindenwood Retreat and Conference Center, which is in uh, Plymouth, uh, Indiana, which is about a half hour south of South Bend. Um, let's see, what else do I need to share? I'm out in four different lands. Um, <clears throat> and for me to remember them all, I know Potawatomi is one of them, I think, but other than that, I'm not quite sure. Uh, what word comes up for you today? Um, survival, just trying to survive today. Um, and how are you feeling? Uh, a little bit on the, on the edge and trying to move forward. So, <clears throat> okay. Raise your hand if you haven't gone yet. All right, Aaron. And he, that is Aaron up there because the other Aaron's not on here. So yeah. <laughs> you're up. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, hi everyone. I'm Aaron. Um, I work uh, for the RCC, I'm the admin assistant, so I'm working with Ben. If you're on Facebook, you probably see me a lot. So if you would like to have an interaction with me specifically, um, pop onto Facebook. I'll put the link here in the chat. We would love to have you join our group and talk to us there. Um, I'm located in Michigan. I'm more in central Michigan, so right about here <laughs> is where I am on Anishinaabe lands. Um, and the word that came up for me during our reflection time was connection. So I'm looking forward to connection today. Um, and I believe, I don't think, Donia, have you gone yet? Okay. Thanks, Erin. Uh, I'm Donia, and I am the executive director here at Bethlehem Center 
which is located on Vancouver Island in uh, British Columbia, Canada. And we are here on the foothill, at the foothills of Mount Benson on Westwood Lake, uh, which is uh, basically the territory of the Coast Salish people, specifically the Sunayam First Nations. And I, uh, what came up for me in our reflection was the word bold. <laughs> And uh, with that comes um, the allotness <laughs> and also some excitement about this discussion today. And I will pass it on to, I don't think we've heard from Nancy yet, have we? Thanks, Donna. Hi, my name's Nancy Golan. I'm at Casa Iskali Retreat Center just outside of Chicago, Illinois. And uh, my word for today would be spring with all of that brings. The weather is gorgeous today. There's a promise of new life and I'm delighted to be here with you. Great, I think that's everyone. Did we miss anyone? Don't think so. Okay, great. Wonderful to hear a little bit from everyone. I'm glad there's some excitement about uh, all the topics, and Kathy, that you're holding one that you've been excited about. That was nice to hear. Um, I'm going to share a uh, poll that I've put together. It's just one question um, with several options for what you're interested in and inviting you to check as many boxes as you like. Um, this will help us see which topics are actually of interest today. And if there are others that I've not listed, feel free to pop them in the chat. This is always fun on my end because I get to see all the little lines, you know, jumping around all the interest levels. Give just a minute more here. Maybe the two people who haven't participated are Aaron and I. <laughs> okay, I'm going to end the poll there. Yep. We got them all and I will share the results with you so that we can look at them together. So it should have popped up. Uh, if you have a little pop-up window, you can see that equity and access was a popular one at the top. And then uh, lots of sixes there, software and equipment, younger audiences, sustainable uh, practices and tools are all other interests. We also have program development pretty high up. There are a couple more that have been posted in the chat, one about employment and uh, one about cancellation policies. And then a little lower in interest, climate justice and long-term onsite community. Probably the long-term onsite community is not as applicable to all centers. Um, I'm going to take a quick screenshot of this. Yeah. Um, I want to kind of set up how, how we want to hold these, these rooms um, because each room will be a little bit different size and there might be some information that gets dropped as your conversation goes on to the, whatever the next room is. So I'm hopeful that we can have in each room uh, for each chunk of time, somebody who can just jot down a few notes. Oh, look, the, the nap has ended. <laughs> Asa, welcome. <laughs> uh, this, so maybe um, Katie won't be taking the notes. Someone else can do that. Uh, but if somebody could just jot down a few notes of what you're learning from the group or what the group is kind of taking away so that we can share those in harvesting uh, 
regrouping right after each breakout. So I'm, what I'm thinking is that we could do about 20 minutes, um, maybe three rooms for 20 minutes. People can split off. Um, if that seems like too long for the number of people we have, we might shrink that up a little bit, 15 minutes. Um, for you to kind of talk through what your concerns are, what, what solutions you're trying out, how that's going, um, compare notes, and then jot down some maybe best practices or something that's emerging from the conversation. Then we can all come back together and say, this is what we found. And if a conversation wants to continue on the same topic, we can keep that room open and go right back into it with some new folks. Um, or the same folks, or everyone, <laughs> however we want that to go. Um, but what I don't want to have happen is for uh, some really great learnings to come out of it, and then for the rest of the group to kind of miss out on hearing those. And our hope is that we can post those to the blog afterwards. So we won't be able to record the breakout rooms. We'll keep those kind of personal for you all to discuss. And then we will record uh, the kind of group sessions when we return. So Aaron, let's maybe pause there on the recording. <laughs> there we go. Yay. Uh, so, okay. So we, it looked like the younger audiences kind of lost steam and we moved into the other two topics, which was equity and access and software and equipment. So those are the two like really boisterous conversations. I hope you had enough time. 20 minutes is not a lot for seven people. Um, but I'm really curious what you all learned. And I saw that Aaron was taking some notes in the equity and access conversation, which looked great. Anything that's kind of bubbling up? Uh, thoughts that you feel like you might take away from that? I can I can chime in, um, Ben. And this is just one of the one of the things that come up. Stacy and I were in the middle middle of a conversation when you brought us back in, right? And a good conversation, and um, we were talking about how you know you go out and you get a more inclusive um, job pool somewhere or bringing in people. And I know that that's that that's a big concern all around. And what I said is, you know, now you have to be really intentional about thinking about how you do that and doing it. And it is a big, I mean, it, it's a big push, it's a big ask. Um, I don't think it's impossible to do, it can be done. Sometimes you gotta reach outside of the, the um, environment or state or wherever you are to try to do it um, for those reasons, but it has to be done, right? Do you know, Tony, you also gave us um, the input about partnering strategically. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I think that's part of a pathway for us to making our centers um, hospitable and welcoming both to more diverse staff and to more diverse audiences. And that really landed with me um, that that's our first step, you know, that because um, we're from Iowa, uh, not, you know, but to your point, I mean, we can use that as cover for not um, being more actively diverse. But um, But I think if we start with our program partners, That'll help us yep. make progress. It will. I mean, it will. Um, I know it's done some wonderful things here in Delaware, and we're still exploring, still building, and still growing. But partnership out in the community always helps. It always helps because it always opens. So there's, you know, you're you're coming with what you have, but then they're also coming with something different and some things that you may not have even thought about, you know, they're able to, to give you, you know, some of their advice and some of the things that they have and then their partners. So, you know, it's like a trickle down effect, I think sometimes.
I saw some notes, you know, sorry, Aaron, reading over your shoulder. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah, no worries. <laughs> but you, you were saying some things about, uh, yes, this relationship building, but also this, like, how do we move folks into more decision-making power so that they actually can say, this is what we need. This is the type of programming we're looking for and have some authority to, to create some of it, or, or at least, you know, have it, uh, take root there. Mm -hmm. Were there other, was that a big part of the conversation? Or was that, um, a side note that just kind of piqued my interest? Well, I know Nancy was talking about that in reference to Casa Escali and their transition of leadership and um, bringing, a, I believe it was the Latinx community to transfer into leadership. I don't know if you want to say more about that, Nancy, or not, but that's that's what the, that particular note was from. Uh, I get. I guess just watching in action what has been successful and. Casa Scali is very, um, you know, it's, it's it's a whole new world. It's a whole new culture in the last 18 months and definitely coming to understand. And they have, the Scali as an organization has about 200 young adults between the ages of 18 and 25 that they place into leadership roles in, in different uh, situations. And, you know, I've just had the opportunity to stand and watch and see, you know, that's, I believe, why they stay is that they feel not only ownership, but they feel like they're going to have an opportunity to be a leader, to grow as leaders, to fall on their face, to get up and go again. And um, again, it's it's interesting, like culturally, because Aaron, when I first started working with them, I was using the word Latinx. And in their community, because they are traditional Catholics, that's not a word they're terribly comfortable with. But I was trying to be like, you know, in there and really get in the language and stuff. So what I've learned is I just have to do a lot of sitting back and listening and figuring out what their values and vision are. And and for me, as somebody who's who's been a director and administrator for many years, that's hard. Um, so I would think whether that's, you know, a, a smaller initiative, like getting a focus group or, you know, uh, here in Chicago, asset based community development is big. Um, man, it's it's a lot of just sitting and, and listening, but mm -hmm. definitely for those young adults, that sense of we're going to make this happen and we're going to have a hand in it is just really important. Yeah, thank you, Nancy, especially for that information about uh, how they prefer to be referred to the Latino community. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, amazing. Pearls of wisdom. It's a lot to chew on in there. Hmm. Anything else from the equity and access uh, conversation that we want to bring back to the full group? And if not, then maybe we can pop over to the other conversation that was happening at the same time that had a more operations kind of focus, um, software and equipment. What did you come up with? How did you solve our problems? <laughs> well, we didn't assign a note taker, I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> I took some notes. I took some notes. Oh, yeah. I think we shared about what each of us were using. And I think that the there were uh, two retreat gurus, three retreat managers, and one sales force with additional um, in-house IT use for creating customized software. Uh, Google Forms, MailChimp type of things. And really looking to see how if there is the perfect thing out there. And I think we didn't have enough time to talk about it, but it sounds like, oh, and then one person, I think it was uh, Kathy is re re use, uses a retreat manager, but she's restricted a little bit because of the university affiliation and the, all the, you know, veils that they have to go through to 
get stuff. But I think um, <clears throat> uh, it's, what it comes down to is it looks like there's no one thing does it all type of software out there, but <laughs> it seems like both retreat manager, people seem to like that and retreat guru, people seem to like that too with some supporting things. So that's kind of where we got to. Anybody else have any? There was an issue of ta issuing tax receipts. Is there a way, a, a group that, a, a kind of software that helps easily send tax receipts to donors, donations? And um, did I miss anything, guys? I just wanted to add, Dania, Dania had a suggestion about getting on the call, on a call. I think for her particular software, it's um, Retreat Guru. But with other people, people that don't use retreat, retreat retreat guru, people that do, so they could hear kind of what are the needs of retreat centers in general. It would help inform them to create a better product to meet mm -hmm. the greater needs. I think that could be pretty powerful for them and for us. Mm. Well, I think I think that's Kathy. One of the things retreat guru does very well is respond to the needs of retreat centers. They are constantly pivoting to show up and hear though if they see a trend of three retreat centers that are this is glitchy or this we need this or they are so responsive within their their capabilities so yeah that feedback uh is a big part of their um uh, way of communicating i agree with that and they're always saying if you want something give us your wish list yes so yeah any suggestions for those of us who are using something else that and would love to get a demo? So, so I sh I can share again. There's a, a, the link to the Retreat Guru site, and what I was suggesting when I said it, the group is is to maybe anyone who's interested in a uh, new software of actually having uh, one of their salespeople who are great uh, take you through a demo together as a group, so that it would be. Uh, away and then we could talk about it offside as well uh, to just share uh, the needs and and as I mentioned I'm happy to connect with Eve or anyone else who's using the software or has questions after your demo to just show you some functionality of how we're using it. We're definitely still learning it's only been just over a year um, but it is definitely revolutionizing you know transforming how we're our access to information and that's really exciting. Sounds like a great conversation. We have uh, some connections with folks at Retreat Guru here at RCC as well. And we could, I'm sure, set up a call with them and bring in a bunch of RCC folks to have that kind of face-to-face -face, uh, feedback session. I think that would be totally possible. Great idea. Yeah. And I'd love to participate in that. Okay, right on. Maybe we could put out an open call uh, if we got something on the calendar with them. Um, was there also a request to do something similar with uh, Retreat Manager or another platform, or was it more specifically around Retreat Guru? I would say for RCC's thing, you better do more than one, or you're going to be looked at, at at a lawsuit. Nice. So I would actually have two or three, or you're going to be looking at trouble, Ben. That's yep. all I'll say. And I, you know, and I would be yep. interested in that. Because as someone who right now really would like anything that's not retreat manager, I think it would be good for us to prevent bias, to come up even with a checklist of functionality. You know, I'd almost be interested in doing that first. So mm -hmm. could we as a group, I'd appreciate input because there's stuff I we probably haven't even imagined that we might want to do. You know, what's our checklist of functionality and then take it to certainly retreat guru and retreat manager, but Salesforce makes me anxious because I've heard it's real expensive, but I also know that it is used by many and it has tremendous integration. Um, and that's one of the areas where we have the most difficulty. So that would be my vote. Now the Paula scared you about being sued. <laughs> I'm just saying. 
It's important. <laughs> I need to be scared sometimes. <laughs> well, it seems like it's to take it into the hands of the, the different companies. Let them tell us what the functionality is instead of us coming to them. Mm -hmm. you know, let them show why, why would this is retreat center collaboration and we have people looking forward to helping in their business. Can you tell us in a page why to pick you? What's your functionality? And then we can mm -hmm. just have all three of them, you know, retreat manager, retreat guru and Salesforce. And that could be the connection. So I agree with that, but I do think that different retreat centers have developed unique um, ways of operating and may have unique um, points of integration that they're looking for, whether it's with um, CRM software or constant contact. So like, and, you know, so I've only been in position eight months. I just think there are people out there who maybe have even developed workarounds or creative yeah. strategies that I haven't even thought of that would really be useful to us in the short term, they might be doing something with retreat manager we didn't even know we could do. And my experience with retreat guru is that they have spent um, a lot of time in that space because they take you through the first year of integration. And again, you know, try to um, help you to adapt it to your the needs of the center because everyone is different for sure. But they the, the base is based on the most common uh, ways of doing things and then customization from there. Great. Um, is there a sense in the group right now that either one of those topics should continue with another round of uh, breakouts? And if so, we can keep those groups going. Any interest in continuing? Maybe just a show of hands. We got more topics too. Well, I think we, for the software, we kind of figured out a next step. So I'm not sure we'd gain that much from, you know, talking with each other again. I think there are new things we need as input. Good, good. That's great. <laughs> um, let's see here. From our options, we could choose uh, to bring younger audiences back into the mix. Uh, we could look at program development um, or sustainability practices and tools. We'll change software and develop software and equipment into uh, program hmm. development. I was wondering if anybody else had any interest in how to get good employees. I mean, we don't have to talk about that, but that's something that's definitely on the forefront of my mind. No. Okay. That's fine. I can join another one. Ben, I'm wondering if, didn't we have a session on that and there was, we recorded it. Is there a, rec a, rec a record of that session oh. we had? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I can send you a link to, to both the recording and to the blog post that we did. Okay. That was not that long ago, but I lose track. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was January. I just joined. This is my second call. Yeah. So. Okay, good. Then we have a resource mm -hmm. for you. Yes. Yay. I would be interested in that too, Erin. We're we're in a small, very small town. Okay. So right. our we, I know why it's hard for us to get employees, but I'll take any ideas. <laughs> okay. I'll post links in the chat here and uh, follow up with you yeah. after too. But I'll I'll give you a little shout of hope. Something shifted for us in December. We were getting like, we were at that point where we weren't even sure if we were going to be able to be open the next week to receive the group that was coming. And then all of a sudden, the it opened up. And so, you know, hold that, that sometimes it just takes the local market to shift slightly uh, and a little tenacity in your recruitment strategy. And so hold, hold the hope because we did have that turn. Thank you so much. I need to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was somebody who talked about wanting cancellation policy. I'd also be interested in talking about that. Um, I'm thinking Maybe that might. Thinking I was that. the one interested in cancellation policies. <laughs> I mean, I can send the two of you. We can make a room. 
I think we're we're both lacking in cancellation policy. So maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, we have them, but nobody wants to follow them. So that was my issue. Yeah, and with since COVID, people have changed their attitude that you should give them all their money back, even if they've canceled within a week of your event. Yep. And it's just a total different mindset. Oh, We've had people threaten to come here even though they had COVID because we wouldn't give them their money back. And they're like, well, I'm coming anyway. And then we give them a credit. And then they, one woman got all her money back because she, the credit card company gave it back to her. So anyway. Yep. Yeah. Use of pre-arrival emails. We have those. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I put together four rooms, uh, program development, younger audiences, sustainability practices and tools, and cancellation policies. Um, and I'm thinking 15 minutes because we're already at 2.37 Eastern time. Um, so 15 minutes, if, uh, if one room doesn't have enough, feel free to jump into another to actually have a, a rich conversation, but I'll let you all determine and I'll send you off. Here we go. So we just have a few minutes left here to do a little harvesting from our groups. I closed the breakout rooms and I'm not sure where they went. They are over here, here they are. Um, so we did program development, cancellation policies, and then a younger audiences group. And I was in the younger audiences group and, and so were several other people, but maybe if there's some other tidbits from the other groups, I'd be curious to hear, for example, the program development group, anything that came out of that that you're excited about? Ken and I discussed the challenges of program development and having experts on staff that can offer programs that, you know, on a predictable basis so that you can bring folks in um, versus for Ken, just being a, a hospitality center, that that is the main focus. For their place yeah so yeah the there's a lot there uh yep good <laughs> we only have a few minutes there's so much more i'm sure <laughs> um what about for our other group the cancellation policies group anything that you all uh solved <laughs> it was fun for me to hear the different ones it seems like we're all vastly different in our ways but i think our we have different models too so but bottom line is, um, it's it, it comes down to um, feeling like it comes more of a respect, kind of like a mutual respect type of thing where, you know, we're holding the space for you and then you cancel at the last minute and, and you get mad when you don't get your money back and they don't understand that it's, <laughs> we're also losing. So anyway, it's um different different policies, but it's, it was good to hear from people. I don't know, anyone else want to comment? It sounds like holding up the quality of the relationship yes. beyond just this one moment of conflict and saying, yeah. we want to serve you and we want you to respect our needs. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And even though you've signed the contract saying that you will, and then you want to back out of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, any, any kind of takeaways from the younger audiences group that folks are, are kind of sitting with? Thank you, Tony. Take care. Well, I think we all learned that chat GPT is something we should explore. <laughs> yep, just because you're experimenting with it doesn't mean you have to use it in the copy that you publish, but could generate some really interesting alignment with trends. I think you mentioned, Danya, that like it will pull on trends that it knows mm -hmm. and work it into the way you talk about what you're doing, yeah. You know, we all know sometimes we sit at our desks in a silo. At least you have some someone to talk it out with. <laughs> <laughs> but but also too is is just that we we discuss like the figuring figuring out how to really shift your marketing strategy from the way we've been doing it for so many years to be attractive to the younger demographic and 
to, you know, really move into more like, um, you know, video and, you know, showing people versus just it all being about text and, and articles. It's really got to be interactive and bringing the essence of what we do to life for people. I liked the way we talked about storytelling and marketing as a way of holding your story and finding out how to share your story with different folks who, who maybe don't understand the language that your center was formed within because they didn't grow up speaking about it that way, even though they might really have a, a hunger for the same kind of practices or space. Um, and there was one other piece of that. Oh, the uh, this idea that younger audiences might mean younger than 55 that 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 like younger doesn't mean 25 necessarily that for some of us it's going to be work to get in 35 year olds mm -hmm. no that, that's important to remember <laughs> yeah um great great uh conversation i so enjoyed uh jumping in on that last round so thank you for having me in there we have taken some notes and hopefully aaron and i have been able to capture a little of this harvesting too and so we'll post a blog post and some recordings um, from what we've discussed. Looking forward to our next conversation, I believe it's May 23rd, with the Cal Poly students who are doing a study of sustainable models of retreat centers. So we can go a little deeper with some of the same questions we're asking today. So I will look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much. Yes, you're so welcome. <laughs>